welcome to the Eastern Business Report here on the Afia Business Morning on DSTV Channel 254 and Go TV Channel 17 on socials. We are at Afia TV Official. The Eastern Business Report is designed to bring you up to speed on business activities and issues affecting businesses within the southeastern region of Nigeria. It comes after the global business news on the Afia Business Morning. My name is Ubon Kings and today we will be examining the Southeast business space, the side hustle enigma. Now, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a side hustle is defined as work performed for income supplementary to one's primary job. The aim is primarily to increase revenue generation whilst developing a skill other than what your primary source of income is. It is expected to be programmed such that it does not conflict with the responsibilities of the primary income source. And joining me on this conversation this morning in the Southeast Business Space, the side hustle enigma is the CEO. Uvit Technologies. Incidentally, he's an engineer and, of course, a fine artist. I'm talking about none other than Vitalis Aze. Good morning, Vitalis. Welcome. Good morning, Bon. <laughs> it's good to have you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's jump right into this. First and foremost, um, tell us who is Vitalis Aze? In a nutshell, not too much stories. Who is Vitalis Aze? Okay. Thank you for having me. Vitalis is a is a human being. Of course. Well, he, <laughs> of course. He's a human being, a man, a mechanical engineer, and mm. a fine artist. Okay. And he's the person sitting right beside him. Now, first let's let's get into some more details. Yeah. Um which of the schools did you go to to acquire your degree in mechanical engineering? Okay. I went to it's a, uh, for IMTN was sort of uh, management and technology, mm -hmm. where I did my um, national diploma, then my higher national diploma, before I went further to get my degree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's cool. Now, um, a question that comes to mind, like it's been bothering me already, is <laughs> there's a mechanical engineer on one side, yes. there's an artist, fine artist on the other hand. You know, there's this saying that people used to say, um, jack of all trade, master, I want to believe yours is master of all. But how do you marry these two professions, the engineer and the artist? Well, Kings, um, nobody is master of all. Okay. Though they say that uh, jack of all trade is master of none. None, yes. But if you want to complete that phrase, you should include master of none, but still better than master of one. Okay, I like yes, that. Of and <laughs> okay. that is where side hustle comes into mm, place. Mm, 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 of mm. course. So now, how do you manage being an engineer and being an artist at the same time? It's simple, very easy. You know, we have a lot of similarities between fine artists and engineers. Right. They all do with creativity. What your head can actually think, think of, yeah. and then what your hands okay. can actually do. So an artist is a man who pictures something inside and then brings it out mm -hmm. by either painting, graphics, textile, um, sculpture, sculpture yeah. and so many of them. Then, an engineer too, he pictures things inside and then he brings it out mm. using mm. his technical skills. So, they work hand in hand. Like, an artist makes use of pencils, pens, paints, welding machines and the rest of them. The same thing goes to that of an engineer. So, an engineer makes use of those equipments too, mm. but different applications. Mm. Of okay. course. So basically, they are almost it's, the same. Yeah. <laughs> almost yes. the same. But now, let's look at um, this business. You are the CEO of UV Technologies. Tell us about UV Technologies. When did you start it? How long has it run? And uh, what has been the level of patronage in the past few years? Well, UV Technology is my own company. 
I had it in mind, I'm going to establish my company, maybe after graduation, but I found myself doing my jobs before graduation. Mm, mm, so mm. it's as good as if it started as early as uh, 2015. Okay. As early as 2015. I, I was still in my second year then. So I started producing things, not just producing things, but making sure that accuracy is involved in what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So tell me, what's the level of patronage like? I mean, Ooh. like, how many people? I mean, okay, let, don't tell me how many people. <laughs> tell me how has <laughs> it been I generally. <laughs> I don't, don't tell me how many people. <laughs> tell me, has it been generally when it comes to patronizing your kind of business? Because you see, the truth of the matter is the craft, arts and craft business, uh, it takes a lot to sell. It takes yes. a lot to sell. But uh, what has it been with reference to patronage for you? Um, things to be honest with you, you know, our people they love important things. Whenever they say this one is from overseas, they will be like, Wow, it's all overseas something. If you hack the price, they will pay. Mm. But you find it difficult for people to patronize our craftsmen here, our artists. In fact, in every discipline, even our certificates, someone I went to. Maybe Harvard, when he comes home, companies will rush in to pick him. Yeah. But with all your intellectual capabilities and then your proficiency in what you're doing, you find out that people might not really patronize you the way you actually wanted or yeah. the way you, you see yourself. They might not really see you that way. So we are getting a lot of people that are patronizing us here in Nigeria. And we also look forward for people that are not living in Nigeria to also patronize. I'm not talking of our people in diaspora. I'm mm. talking of foreigners to patronize us as well. Mm. So that's the level we're actually trying to, to get to. Yeah. Well, now, now let's, let me bring you home. Yeah, we're in Enugu as it stands. Of course. That's where we are. But tell me, um, in, in here in this local, uh, Enugu is not local, local, but that's where we are. Now tell me, what would you, how would you rate the level of reception for your business here, especially in Enugu? Let's forget diaspora. Okay. Here in Enugu, our people here, they are very good people. The thing is this: whenever you do something for our people, and you do it very well, they will appreciate you, and they will bring in their people to come and patronize you. Mm. That is how they thank you for doing a good job for them. And when you mess up, they will mess <laughs> you up too. Mm. With their mouth and mm. everything. Mm. They'll make sure that you don't get people around them to come to patronize you. Mm. That's just it. So, but for them to appreciate, they appreciate us very, very well. Now, that, now, you just said something very key about the fact that they could mess you up with the things they say. But yeah. from your own assessment, if you are to judge from, say, word of mouth what somebody says about your business and what you put online which of these two sells your business better basically what people say referral pays more online many including you and i we do not trust online products but if you've seen somebody's own product and then you patronize him and the thing is working for you i'm telling you the truth you will still go back to patronize that guy. So it only takes the grace of God for people to patronize you online. Hmm. I had a, a very serious challenge. You know, a, a lady was trying to patronize me online and she was like, um, how will I pay you? Is it when you finish the work or <laughs> before you start? I was like, pay me before I start your work so that at least I'll have something to buy the materials Material. and all that. They should be like, ah, in this country, where you know that we have scammers everywhere, I was like, oh my God, is this what this country is turning into? Mm, mm, Though mm. I was not all that uh, surprised about it anyway. But I know that deep inside of me, I will not trust people that way via online things. Mm. Yeah. So you would prefer a physical one Physical one. conversation with the person. You meet the, the person in his office and then 
you know that he's actually producing <laughs> what he's producing. Right, right. So now um, you've said number one. Um, you've talked to me about level of patronage. You've talked to me reception, and now we're looking strictly more into the business proper. Now, um, where did the passion for fine arts come in? Oh, because obviously you read mechanical engineering. Oh, where did the passion for fine arts come? You know, arts, arts is like life. Art is very beautiful. And then I know that 90% of human beings, they love art. And I know you also like art. Oh, well. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, my art and everything that has to do with Vitaris is within me. It runs in my veins. I grew up to know that my grandfather is a craftsman. Oh, okay. And an artist as well. I saw my father making a lot of drawings. Though he did not read fun and apply art, but it runs in my family. My uncles, my siblings as well. We all do art very well. But I had to take it to a certain level of proficiency where I found myself, you know, doing a lot of good jobs and people are actually patronizing me. You know, before I started doing it, because I love doing it, never knew that it was going to give me <laughs> this kind of finance that is giving me today. Mm. So, mm. art is really good. It's really good, right? Yeah. All right, we'll take a short break right now. When we come back, we're going to be asking him questions about that and the challenges he's faced, as well as other issues. So please stay. Uh, the show continues in a bit. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> You're welcome back in case you're just joining in. This is the Eastern Business Report on the AFIA Business Morning. And I'm still playing host to my guests in the studio. Of course, he is engineer and artist. Let's add that part. Vitalis Eze. And we've been talking about the side hustle thing with special reference to um, what he does. And let's come back to this conversation. You did say something quite earlier about the fact that you are managing two, two job descriptions, so a bad lack of better expression, two job descriptions as an engineer and as, an, as a fine artist. Now, let's look at some of the challenges you faced thus far. Have you ever had a job as a mechanical engineer that um, conflicted with a job as a fine artist? How did you handle those kind of situations? If I understood you very well, you are actually you know, saying that maybe I got a job as a mechanical engineer, mm -hmm. and at the same time... Got another one as a fine Another artist. one. How came. would you undo that kind of situation? Yeah, I like that question. You know, in fine arts, you, when you want to, you know, give someone a perfect job, you do it yourself. You don't lose it to another artist. Right. Because right. your own type of art is totally different from what others are doing. Even yeah. when you... Let me say... If I'm to make a painting of you, and then another artist is still making the same portrait, yeah, to be the done. two of them will resemble you, but number one is the texture and the, the color you actually used, right. the color combination and everything. So, so many people they would like you to do that job for them, not you giving it to someone else to do it for you. In the other hand, a mechanical engineer can actually subcontract some of his Job. jobs to another engineer but you make sure that that engineer is someone who likes precision just like you mm. because mm. i had um, a conversation with uh, one of my clients while doing a job for him he was like man vitalis this you are uh, perfection of a thing you know you you so much like this uh, precision of a thing that you know since he started patronizing me that I've proven to him that I can, I can actually do this job more than any other person he has given this job, this kind of job mm -hmm. to. And I was like, if I am going to give someone a job as a mechanical engineer, you must, number one, know what is called precision. If you don't do anything to be precise, I won't give you that job. So if the, co the job comes that way, I have mechanical engineers that I trust very well that they can do that job for me. Mm -hmm. And then, as an as an artist, I don't lose 
that work to anybody because okay. I don't want mess up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's 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 come back to some other issues. I know one of the challenges before we get into other challenges. One of the challenges most um, businesses, especially the creative space, is the issue of pricing. Oh yes, uh, I know that you could come up with a great job and. Uh, or rather, someone asks you to do something, and you already in your creative mind, you've thought of how you want to achieve it, and uh, pretty much know exactly how much it will cost to achieve what you have in your head, and you tell the person the price, and the person tells you, uh uh, can't you do it for my brother in the village? Can't even do this thing yes, for me. Yes. But how do you handle those kind of situations where people get to for, underprice you? That's it, basically. How do you get no, that? There's a course we did in school, they call it. Uh, business management mm. yeah in engineering so you know you need to know how to manage your clients you need to convince them that a welder is totally different from a technician totally different from a technologist and totally different from an engineer and then looking at the categories of these people that are into technology you don't expect an engineer to do exactly what a welder is doing and you don't expect a welder to do what an engineer is capable of doing so they all have their uh, specifications you know you don't expect uh, you don't expect a goat to give birth to a ram, and they don't expect a ram to give birth to a cow, and vice versa. So, it's quite simple. When you tell them, sir, madam, I'm an engineer. I've done this job for so time. Yes, I know that your brother in the village can actually do this, but we not give you the perfect job that you're actually, you're actually looking for. You know, when you want to produce, let me say, for instance, this wristwatch, and they give it to um, a craftsman, yes, the craftsman must have done it for like over a decade, but he will keep on repeating that pattern. He wouldn't like to bring in Any an innovation. Right. So an engineer will look at what others have done. He'll be like, yes, they are doing it. It's actually serving the purpose, but can't we do it this way? Mm, mm, it, mm. Will, it will now bring in the beauty of that job. So basically, if you are patronizing an engineer or a high tech guy, you don't expect him to collect what uh, your brother in the village will collect. So that just that stops it. <laughs> so, so you just answer my question. <laughs> what if I come to you right now and you tell me this job is send me a hundred thousand naira, and I tell you, hey, I don't have hundred. Can you do it for fifty? And you know okay. already that the budget for that thing, even plus your Raw material and everything is past that 50k. How do you handle those kind of situations? The thing is this. You still find someone that will do it below the cost price. But the thing is this. They will use substandard materials. Sometimes they will tell me, can't you use the, use the substandard material? I'll tell you that I don't do this kind of job. Because if it has an issue tomorrow, they will They'll be like, cool. who did this job? Mm -hmm. Who is the, the, the guy that did this job that he doesn't know what he's doing? You are, you are downgrading me, and it's not bringing good credit to me. Mm. You understand? So I have to, I, I need to advise you, look, if I do it this way, don't even say that I'm the one that did it for you, in case you have issues. issues. And most times, I reject those kind of jobs. Mm. I reject it. Because mm. it doesn't show that I'm an engineer. As an engineer, I'm supposed to convince you that, no. You know, that's what we call safety in engineering. And basically, Whatever you are doing in engineering, safety is number one. So even when you go to some industrial uh, layouts where they are doing a lot of engineering works, if you don't come with your reflective jacket, you are not even allowed to enter inside that site. And most importantly, your safety boots, helmet, and all that. So mm -hmm. now, now let's yeah. let's look at something. You said something just now about. Um, advising your clients. Now, what if your client refuses to be advised? I know that as a professional, most of the time what we do is you talk to the client, let them see reason. Because have you never had a client who does not want to see reason what you're saying? 
Of course. Now, in cases like that, what do you do? You just you just walk away and keep your advice to yourself. I will try as much <laughs> as, as I can. can. Okay. Then, if you if you don't want to listen to me, I'll just tell you that, sir, or madam, please, we don't do this kind of job here. If you carry it somewhere else, I'll take it somewhere okay. else. And, and that's one, one, one of the sad things, really, because you know you need the money, but the money is not enough to take care of what you're supposed yeah. to do, plus your profit, but you let it go. But now, let's move away from that. Now, in this current prevalent economic situation, how do you handle doing business, especially with uh, uh, the hiking prices of raw materials? Mm -hmm. I mean, you pretty much would use metal, wood, if necessary. How do you handle that, really? I, I want to. I want you to know. I feel your pain. So tell me, how do you handle that? <laughs> you don't need to feel my pain anyway, because <laughs> even you actually suffering the recession. Oh well. Of course. Um, that's just the talk of the day, anyway. Sometimes I will go to the market. Let me say, like, if I go to the market today, I'll check some things. I'll buy some things, and then going back like two days after. You find out that you're already buying it higher than what you bought. Mm. Like, let me say, let me just use a typical example. Normally, if I want to use plywood, we have a variety of plywoods. Right. Yeah. The MDF, AGF, Chinese plywood, and so many of them. You have marine plywood as well. So, before, if I was able to get it, let me say, like, a thousand naira. Towards August, if you go now, they will sell it a thousand five. Just calculate it. Mm -hmm. Let me say. <laughs> let me say. Okay, even the electro, we usually buy electro for like around four thousand, five thousand, six thousand, depending on the quality of the electro. Mm -hmm. Now, electro is very, very expensive. That even a micro electro can be sold. Around six thousand naira right now, so these are the challenges we get, and not even getting the, the the raw materials at a higher cost. Sometimes when you go, they will tell you that they don't have it here. You can go to Onicha to buy it, or you go to Lagos. And sometimes for you to import things that are not in Nigeria, it's quite expensive. Yeah, you know, uh, doing this uh, online marketing with. Mm. Uh, Alibaba and rest of them, you find out that the cost of shipping and everything will be high because they deal in dollars and we, we, we are managing our Naira here. By the time you convert your, dollar, your Naira to dollar, you find out that you have nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's the challenges we are having in this kind of uh, situation. economic situation. But, okay, now, but, but then again, um, uh, what are your prospects? Uh, this will be my last question. What are your mm -hmm. prospects? Well, how do you see or what do you see 2024 that we are in right now uh, looking like for businesses generally in this part of the world? Well, um, 2024 is still a bouncing baby. We are hoping to see a lot of goodies. And at the same time, we are also looking at uh, some problems which we are going to face and then know how we should uh, tackle them. Well, my advice to people is this. Don't have high expectation for the year, but try as much as you can to make the year to be favorable to you and the people around you. Whatever you are doing, keep on doing it and don't expect too much. Mm. Yeah. All right, that's a good place to leave it. And uh, well, um, that will be the size of the package on the Eastern Business report. So thank you for your time once, twice, a million more times. I have been playing host to the CEO, UV Technologies, and the person of Vital is AZ. And we've been talking about uh, the side hustle enigma. And uh, thank you again for your time. And the program returns again tomorrow. And uh, just so you know, the Afia Business Morning is not yet over. Coming up next at half past 11 would be How Market. My name is Ubong King. Good morning.